Hello everyone, Man of Interest here for This Week in Keyboards. And perhaps for the first time in a long time, no GMK topics in the news doc. What? Don't think that means we have no news topics though. We still have a handful of topics that are worth talking about, so let's get to it. Speaking of worthwhile topics to talk about, the sponsor for this episode, Novel Keys. Over on Novel Keys, they're running GMK Darling, Cam Raid, JTK Classic FC, and GMK Julian all at the same time, so you still have a chance to join in on some awesome keycaps. If you're shopping for any non-group buy items like desk mats or lubricants, use my promo code HueyHueyHuey for 5% off your order. Thank you very much to Novel Keys. Okay, what do we have in the keycap news today? A few fun topics. First from Dr. Derivative, we have EPBT TA Origins, which is a clean and calm inspired set by, um, inspired by the vintage Triumph Adler Gabriel typewriters. This set will feature a muted gray base with two tints of blue legends, a darker blue for the primary legends and a lighter blue for the sub legends. There's also gonna be an alternative blue modifiers pack, which I think is gonna be the move for this set. As an EPBT set, I think it looks pretty nice. And for me, it's a must buy until GMK has a version with the pad printed sub legends. So you know what I'm talking about? I'm a fan of the look of this set as long as the sub legend quality stays a plus. This is an EPBT set that I'd actually get in on. Our next set is an EPBT set, but not a PBT set. It's EPBT's ABS set. And uh, last time I covered it, they had this horrid colorway going on. Now they've done something normal and sensible. EPBT ABS white on black double shot. Now this is an EPBT ABS set I can get behind. While the compatibility doesn't have everything, like my preferred 65%, 75% layout, you know, HHKB backspace, it's not bad for $69. How is it gonna turn out? I don't know, but I'm gonna buy a set and report to you all, so stay tuned for that review, unboxing, unveiling, whatever I do. Lastly, in our key set news is the group buy for JTK Classic FC Triple Shot Hiragana, which is heavily inspired by the beloved Famicom of the 80s, giving us a nice red, beige, and black color combo. I'm pretty excited for this because uh, Triple Shot keycaps, pretty cool deal. And at $100, I can't hate that base kit for what it offers in terms of compatibility. And come on, it's Triple Shots. I'm gonna have to see I'm going to have to see this with my own eyes, so you know I'm going to have to get it. I think it could open the door for a lot of really cool and unique designs in the future. I mean, imagine if someone was willing to put in the money for triple shot molds of Triumph Adler. Mm -hmm -hmm. This is going to be an expensive month for key sets for Huey mm. Let's move on to the keyboard news, and we have some interesting topics. Let's start with the Lodestone by Jay of Topclack and Prototypus. This board is a collab between Jay and Flex of FLX Virgo that I covered previously. So what makes this 65% so unique? The mounting is a mix of magnet and gasket mount. How do magnets work, right? But what does this actually mean? Well, if you put, you know, this magnet positive to positive, it'll repel itself, right? Well, what if you use that as a mounting concept for a plate? Here's a little gif of that proof of concept. It's certainly a very unique concept. How about the other details? It's gonna be a two-piece aluminum construction for the case, carbon fiber plate, QMK compatible PCB, USB-C daughter board, seven degree typing angle, small run of 50 boards after the first prototype with future runs in the potential future. April is the expected timeline for the first run. In terms of looks, the bezels remind me a bit of the M65A, but even more chunk to it. The bottom is fine and certainly adds to the overall chunky character of the board. The idea will be interesting. I wonder how it's going to execute in reality. The next keyboard we have to talk about is another 65% one. It's the Aki S by Senro. After Senro's collab with a friend to make the Bach, this board is Senro's first fully involved project that's, that's just for him. So to summarize the four paragraph design inspiration, 
It's inspired by slim, streamlined sports cars. It also features a symmetric blocker design, rear accent bar, and gaskets. This board, the Yaki S, will feature a 7 degree typing angle, top mounted plate, both anodized and e coating options, as well as an option for a brass middle and bottom weight. The plate will be available in brass, aluminum, polycarb, and carbon fiber with both a full plate and a flex cut plate option with a possibility for a half plate, and we'll see. This board will be first come, first serve with only 35 to 40 units max for the first round. So if you're in it to win it, you can start saving up now because we don't know how much it's going to be, but we know it's going to be in Q3 of this year, so you have some time to think about it. Our next board it's a bit of an odd one, and I think that its oddities will be met with both appreciation and disdain. Let's talk about the Synth Labs 060 by Nostril. This is a 60% board that will be gasket mounted, has a 7 degree typing angle, and will be aluminum for the top with uh, and bottom with a brass bar, brass plate, and brass weight. And so, it's 2020, so polycarbonate options might be available. Yay. So now that we got all those small details out of the way, wow, look at this board. It has a bar on the top for your tech decks to grind off of. Uh, got some heat fins for all that passive air cooling your PCB may need and that tray, that pen tray, right? Joking aside, we know that so far the mounting is done via a screwless sandwich gasket mount implementation, which is fine, easy enough when Synth Labs decides on which rubber parts are available for them to work with. One detail I noticed was missing in these renders, which you may have noticed, USB port. Where are you gonna be, bud? Like, I, I'm serious. If you look on the render, there is literally no USB port. It's a small detail, but they did mention a USB-C breakout daughter board will be in, so I'm assuming it's gonna be a centered port. I hope I'm not wrong there, because it's gonna look funny regardless. So are you a fan of this look? Is this a bit over the top? I don't know. At the moment, it's hard to say that it'd be the move for me. Yeah. Our next topic takes us to an even larger keyboard. It's the Austin Round 2 by Drifting Bunnies. It's an interest check for now. With the Austin and HBCP making their way out to the community, it's no doubt that people are lusting for more 1800 compact style layout keyboards. This interest check is just more of an announcement since the PCB will be compatible with both versions and Drifting Bunnies has said the case and design should be largely and virtually unchange. So if you're a fan of having a numpad, keep your eyes out for the Austin Round 2. The main difference for Round 2 will be the colors offered. Wonder what they are. Let's go over to a uh, another keyboard with another mixed review. See, I'm layering it, you know, something interesting, odd, something everyone's gonna mostly like. Now it's something interesting again. It's the Luna by Ungodly Design. It's a 60% keyboard. It features aluminum machined case, five degree typing angle, five millimeter integrated plate, interchangeable acrylic rings, and a mirrored stainless steel or acrylic bottom insert if you want LEDs. The Luna also ships with one up keyboards, hot swap PCBs, so I have feelings about this board. You can pre order it right now for $350, and the shipping window's gonna be March 2020, right around the corner. Cool. But, uh, so interesting things. It's gonna have an interlocking design on the side, so in the future you can attach a numpad on, which uh, cool, I guess. Uh, that's gonna be releasing in April. But the sides, that is a very interesting point for this board. It contains all the screws that holds everything together in its sandwich variety. It's a very exposed look. I wish you've got the black case, you can also have black screws. Speaking of options, let's get to that PCB because it doesn't look like there's a way to order the keyboard without the PCB. That means if you know ahead of time you won't be using this PCB, you're paying extra for something you won't use. And if it's this PCB, this keyboard should work fine with any 60% size PCB. So it'd be nice if buyers got the option to use the PCB they preferred by just not buying it with that. If you're going to include a PCB for a case like this, come on, not north facing hot swap. That's not the move. Lastly, it's kind of funny where if you look on the, on the bottom, it looks like it's machined for Rama style bar feet, but instead they just put a uh, little bump ons in the corners. That's, that's cute. 
Okay, last topic in the news, the Bella 75% by KVD fans. This 75% features staggered arrows, some separated, separated navigation keys, and interestingly, it includes a switch opener that attaches to the case. Who asked for it? I don't know, but before we talk about that, uh, let's look at the renders. It's gonna be a top mounted brass plate that has some relief cuts in it, a weight at the bottom, some decently thick rubber feet that are gonna be slotted in, nice. The sides are pretty unoffensive, but that you, but it's unique from that curved line since the top is machined like that. Okay, let's talk about the switch opener. It's, it's cute for some of the renders because it's, it's a cat, uh, be better than the renders with the KBD fans logo as the opener in my personal opinion. Hopefully the cat's gonna be an option because that's, that's the move, come on. It looks like it attaches via a magnet that sits on top of a screw, I think? Not too bad. Um, lastly, on these renders, why are there two F11s and not an F12? Get your game together. That's it for this week in keyboards. Not having GMK in the news uh, feels odd, but uh, it's interesting. I don't think this is gonna be a trend moving forward. Let's enjoy this while we can. Hope you all enjoyed the news for the week. Uh, sorry if I sound like hell, cause I gotta feel like hell. Uh, but I'll see you this weekend where I'll be doing a stream. It's either gonna be the cool board or key quiz, TBD, Saturday, be there and be square or round. I don't judge. Be you, be you, you do you. Okay, I need to get a, you know what? I need to get a haircut. I need to get a light like installed right there on top of me. Just get a nice little rim light for my hair. Um, that's going to take some annoying work. But I can make it happen. I can make it happen. So you're going to make things happen. There's a lot of key sets I need to make happen with my wallet. Ugh. That's future Huey's problem, right? Future Huey's problem. Let's get to it.